Hello guys, welcome back to Tip Top English. My name is Precious, the Tip Top English tutor. So before we can continue, I just want to say thank you to the 16 subscribers that I have. Guys, it means a lot for you to subscribe on my channel. And thank you for liking my TikTok videos, Instagram reels, and what, what else? And Facebook videos and posts. Thank you so much. And okay. So on today's episode, I just want us to talk about a contract, employment contract, okay? So uh, basically, I'll be talking about what you have to look out for on your contract if you have applied for uh, a job in a Hagwon, which means a private school English academy in South Korea, okay? So I'm just going to say this quickly what your contract should have okay so the first thing that you need to see on your contract is the job title okay so it should write that you'll be an english instructor and whatever the agreement that you had with your employer okay so with me mine was written english instructor okay and you have to look out for the job description don't accept um employment contract that doesn't have job description because you'll end up doing things that you aren't supposed to be doing okay so in south korea for example if you are under e2 visa which means like a visa for english to uh, english teachers english uh, instructors you are not supposed to teach any other subject but english so you can be expected to teach math or science at your school okay because it's illegal should inspectors come to the school and find you teaching uh, any other subject except English, you are going to get in trouble. You'll be deported, your visa will be cancelled or something, okay? And we don't want that because the school is their country, they'll be protected, but then you won't be protected because you are a foreigner. All right, cool. And another thing that you have to look out for is employment start date. Okay, so in South Korea, we work under contracts, which is like a 12 month contract. Okay, so you should look out for when you are starting and when is your contract ending. And another thing that you have to look for is for a salary. Okay, so I'm just going to share a, a short story with what I've experienced when I was busy with my interviews preparing to come this side. So what happened is that I saw um, a job post, okay? And I applied for that job post, but then after applying, after doing, I got successful. I did the interview and everything. After the interview, the school was like, okay, we like you. We want to work with you. So we are going to send you a contract. Okay. So I was so happy that finally, just after one interview, because I was still starting with the process and I had only one interview. So I was so happy that I'm getting a job with my first interview, right? They send, um, the contract when i look at the contract the salary that they wrote on the post and what is on the contract that they sent to me are two different things so now the salary that's on that was on the contract was lower than what they advertised online okay so i was like why is my salary so low right now what is happening they're like no because you are from south africa and you don't have much experience with teaching one-on-one -on -one because the only experience that i had was teaching online so now your salary went down but i was like on the post you didn't write that um the salary is for people who have experience you said start starting salary whether you have experience or not this is your starting salary and if you have more experience that's when you can um negotiate but then for a start they had told me that it is this amount so i was like just because i'm from south africa now it's um 
now I should be paid less. So I didn't take that contract. So also look out for those. You should get the same salary that they showed on the job post. And don't even listen to them when they say South Africans. Wara, 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 wara. Oksalayo, you are an English native speaker. Okay, good. Moving along, you have to check uh, sick leave days, guys. Because we are people, you are coming to a foreign country, you don't know what's going to happen to you when you get here, when your body is trying to uh, get used to the climate and everything. Um, some people, it takes time for them to acclimatize to new environments before they can acclimatize. Some people get flu, they get sick and stuff. So if your contract doesn't have sick leave days, then it's not good for you because you can get sick and at any time and that's not in your power. You can't control when you're going to get sick and when you won't get sick. So a good Hagwan contract should have um, sick leave days. Usually it's three. I don't know if there are schools that offer more. But then according to the labor laws in South Korea, it should be three. And vacational leave days should be 11. So if your school is offering you less than 11 days, please try to negotiate with them, try to talk to them. And if they don't want to run for your life or stay, it's up to you. All right. But then the labor laws say 11, 11 days. Okay, cool. And what else? The benefits are the most important things. So your contract should have, you should get severance pay so in our south african language severance pay give bonus okay and then you should also have um medical cover health insurance cover which you're going to pay 50 percent and your employer is going to pay 50 percent and you should have a pension again and they should also give you uh, the money can reimburse you uh, for flight flight ticket or they should buy you a flight ticket okay so once you if you buy your own ticket uh, your flight ticket to come this side your school should reimburse you or they should buy a ticket for you to come okay so that one is just up to you but then most schools they do that and i feel like it's the right thing to do because you are coming to work at their company. Hello, they should start showing that, okay? We want you. We will take care of you, you see? And another thing is accommodation, which is more important. With accommodation, your school should give you accommodation, not sharing. Guys, do not accept uh, an offer from a school where you are going to share accommodation with other teachers number one we are too old to be sharing guys you can't be sharing uh, a house with people as if you are at rest or hostel or something you deserve your own space hello and another thing if your school is not offering you uh, accommodation they should give you accommodation allowance but then I advise you to accept uh, the accommodation that they'll give you. If you have problems with it, just talk to them that I don't like this accommodation. Please look for another accommodation for me. That's what I did and I didn't have any problems because I didn't like the first apartment that I was supposed to stay in. And my school didn't have a problem with looking for a new apartment for me and another thing just a personal advice uh after interview if it was successful always ask to talk to the foreign teachers who are working at the school so that they can tell you about their experience because some schools are just red flags you might be taking yourself to a lion's den without knowing so Try to talk to as many people as possible and also check if the school is not blacklisted. There are group chats on Facebook. 
and where you can ask about different schools before you can take their offer or before interview because there are so many schools that are blacklisted blacklisted means they are no go areas they don't treat their teachers well so you don't want to be in a foreign country and have a toxic work environment okay thank you guys for watching i hope this video was helpful it's short but then i feel like uh, everything is clear and please don't forget to subscribe to share like and comment so thank you guys see you next time bye